God, I need a haircut. <laughs> a kingdom for a barber. What up, nerds? I'm Jay Sharif. Welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, I make short videos about whatever tech or gadgets I've purchased in the last week. And this week, I've been shopping for car-related gadgets. I've had four different things arrive in the post. And I'm going to start with the most important one. At the moment, I've got this plugged into my car charger. It might look like a simple USB charger that you plug into the cigarette lighter, but it's much more than that. Now, I bought this three years ago for the princely sum of nine pounds, uh, and it's called the Stylus Stinger. That's Stylus with a Z, by the way. And the reason it costs so much is that it has two additional functions. In the event of an accident, you can use this to cut your seat belt and to smash your window. And I'm the kind of morbid thinking person who worries about such things, especially because I've often got kids in the car. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want one for yourself. However, it's time to move on because two USB charging ports is not enough anymore. So here is a four USB charger that came in the post this week. And the reason I bought this was because I'm going to be charging at least three different devices in my car at the same time. It's called the Elki Quick Charge. It only costs five pounds and it claims to be USB 3.0 compatible. In other words, it can charge more quickly than the old USB 2.0 chargers. My old stylus stinger has a maximum output of 2.4 amps, whereas this Elki Quad USB charger has a maximum output of 3.5 amps. That's not a huge difference, but more is always better for sure. Before I talk about the other three products I've bought, let's quickly head outside for a look at the status quo. Hello, so here I am in uh, my environmentally unfriendly uh, car. Uh, some people call them Chelsea tractors. I, I don't like that term. I think that's a, a slur uh, on these wonderful SUVs uh, that I absolutely love. It's the third one I've had in a row, uh, my third SUV. Anyway, we're in here to look at two things. Firstly, uh, this is my dash cam. This dash cam came with the car. It's wired in, as you can see. Now, look what happens when I turn the ignition. Nothing happens that, apart from that clicking noise. Uh, basically, it's now defective. Now, those are like £10 dash cams that you can get off eBay uh, delivered to you from China. They're not particularly high quality. Look, what's it doing? What the hell is that? I have no idea. Okay, so that's problem number one. The second problem I have is to do with my car charger, my phone charger. Um, so I have one of these um, wirelessly charged phones um, and... Uh, I don't know what they call QI charging or whatever the hell they call it. Um, and so I bought one of these chargers quite a while ago. Um, and the idea is that uh, it connects to uh, your cigarette lighter socket and you just put your phone in here and it should uh, close up and then charge your phone. But as you'll notice, uh, oh, it is charging my phone. <laughs> it's typical. <laughs> it's actually working today, but for the last few weeks it hasn't been working. So that's what I need to fix. I need to replace this with a more reliable one that actually works. Also, I don't really like this mechanism, this this kind of arm mechanism that connects it to the uh, windscreen. I don't really like that. Um, and what I want is something that's a little more I don't know, convenient, easier to use. Um, also, you'll notice my screen is horribly fogged up. That's a regular problem you have if you live in a cold climate like we do in Northern Europe. Um, in the UK it rains a lot and it's very cold, uh, temperature changes throughout the day um, and you end up with these foggy screens. So these are the three problems we need to solve. So now we've identified the problems, how am I going to fix them? Let's start with the dash cam situation first. The car came with a cheap and cheerful device. It was basic and it did the job and that's fine but now i want something more interesting and what really intrigued me was the idea of having a dual camera dash cam 
I wanted one that films what's behind me as well as what's in front. And luckily, there are many different options available on Amazon and eBay. The one I went for in the end is called the R300. I'm not even sure which company uh, makes it, to be honest. Uh, it's one of those generic Chinese manufacturers. And this is what it looks like when you try and use it. I've already put a brand new 32 gigabyte micro SD card inside. And because this is filming in full HD, I made sure that I used a class 10 card. The moment you turn on your ignition, the dash cam starts receiving an electric current and it automatically starts recording. However, I'm just going to stop recording so I can show you the menu system. It's pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, you can choose whether to record using both cameras or just one of them. You can choose whether to record audio or not. You can set to the time and date, of course. Uh, you can turn the beeps on and off. And of course, as always, I turn them off straight away. You can turn the view screen on and off. And then you have something called G-Sensor Sensitivity. What this is about is how the dash cam responds to shocks. If you're ever in an accident, your car will usually decelerate quite quickly. And that is what this G-Shock sensitivity is about. In the event of an accident, the dash cam will notice the dramatic change in G-forces and it will immediately save and lock the latest video recording. That way, your footage of the accident will be preserved. This dash cam gives me four options for G-Shock sensitivity, low, normal, high, and I can also turn it off. Turning it off would be useful in some scenarios. Imagine you're doing a track day in your car and you're on a track full of hairpin turns or you're having to accelerate and brake a lot. What you don't want is for your dash cam to misinterpret your heavy braking or fast cornering as a series of accidents. So, in those situations, you turn off the G-Shock system. Similarly, if you're in a performance car or you have an aggressive driving style, then you might want to turn the G-Sensor sensitivity to low. I'm going to leave it on normal for now, as I'm not an aggressive driver by any stretch of the imagination. There are a couple of other settings like language and vibration and frequency, but I'm just going to leave those on the default setting. The video is supposed to be full HD at 30 frames per second, and it does record the audio as well. The video at the front is supposed to be 170 degrees wide, so basically the same as an action camera. The advert on Amazon claims it has night vision. I'm not sure what that means, but it seems to do the job well enough in the city. Now, on Amazon, this model costs about £60. However, I got mine off eBay, for half that price. Unfortunately, that eBay seller has suddenly disappeared, so I can't share a link for you, but I will leave a link below to this dash cam on Amazon. However, I would strongly urge you not to buy it. Whenever you buy these generic unbranded Chinese gadgets online, you're rolling the dice. Uh, you might get lucky and end up with something brilliant, but a lot of the time, you'll wish you spent a little more for a branded product, and that's exactly the case here. The dash cam has some annoying issues. Firstly, it's not actual full HD at all. Uh, it will take the video feed from both cameras, front and back, and create a hybrid video of them both. However, both those feeds are VGA resolution, so they're 640 pixels by 480 pixels. Essentially, that's an image of about 300,000 pixels per camera. Now, full HD is actually 2 million megapixels. So even taking these two cameras together, you're not getting a full HD image. To be honest, for a 30 pound dash cam, I could live with that. But this device has a much bigger problem that is a total deal breaker for me. You see, to check the file sizes, I tried to transfer the videos to my computer. When I put the SD card into my MacBook, however, I couldn't read the files. In fact, my MacBook couldn't even see the files. Now, I thought maybe this is just an issue with my MacBook, so I tried the card in my other MacBook and had exactly the same problem. The files just wouldn't show up. Then, I tried putting the SD card in a normal PC. 
Even the Windows 10 computer couldn't see the files. So then I put the card back in the dash cam and connected the device to my computer with a USB cable. I still couldn't access the files. The only way to view the videos you've recorded on this dash cam is to watch them on this tiny screen here. Because the moment you put a new SD card in this device, it immediately demands that you format the card. And until you format that card, it won't let you use the device. It seems to format the card into its own proprietary file system. And that file system can't be read by PCs and Macs. So there's no easy way of getting the videos off this dash cam. I wish I could send it back, but as the eBay shop that sold it to me has disappeared, there's no chance of getting a refund. So I've learned my lesson, and now I'm going to pay a little bit more money and buy a branded dash cam instead. And I suggest you do the same. Next product I want to talk about is the wireless phone charger. Now, as you saw earlier, I got myself a wireless charger that attaches to the windscreen. I bought it for £25 from Amazon a couple of years ago, and I've never really liked it. It looks quite ugly. It often detaches itself from the windscreen, and the wire hanging down from the bottom rubs on the dashboard and is probably getting damaged. I was willing to tolerate all of this because I didn't realise there were alternatives. Then, while browsing Amazon, I came across this. It says it's a wireless charger and it's specifically designed to hold your phone in a way that works well for Google Maps. And here it is. Now, I have to confess that this is the second time I've ordered this product. The first time around, I got one that wouldn't charge my phone. I've bought another one in the hope that I just got unlucky last time. And hopefully that was just a dud device rather than a design flaw. The best way to test this out is uh, right here. So I'm plugging uh, the USB-C cable into the back of the device. And now the moment of truth. Will it charge my phone? Nope. No. I, I had high hopes because I really love this design. But this is the second one I bought. <sighs> it's a design flaw. It's not. It, I didn't get a dud device last time. It's a bloody design flaw. And I'm so, so disappointed by that because I love the look of this. I think that's a much more convenient way of having a, a wireless car charger because it holds it nicely in a kind of landscape way like this, and that's what you want, but it just will not charge my phone. Oh, what? Oh. Oh. Is it? It is. It, it's, it's charging my phone. It really is working. Oh, that's, that's, ah. Uh, thank God for that. I thought I'd wasted 25 quid. Uh, anyway, it costs 25 quid. Uh, there'll be a, uh, a link in the description below. Uh, <laughs> success! So happy <laughs> they actually worked. Okay, um, did it work? Yes, it did because I unplug it. Yeah, that it does work. <sighs> maybe it's just maybe. Oh, yes, yeah. I I don't I don't know I don't know what to say now because it clearly only works intermittently, um, and I can't guarantee that it will work, but. I do prefer this over the old design. I like this kind of, you know, phone sitting landscape. I'll, 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 I'll keep it for now and we'll see. Uh, I might send it back. I'll try it for a few weeks and we'll, then maybe I'll send it back. We'll see. And finally, I mentioned earlier about how annoying it is that my windscreen always gets fogged up. Again, this is a common issue in colder countries. The only way of dealing with it quickly is to turn on your aircon because aircon sucks moisture out of the air that reduces the fogging on your windows and windscreen. But I hate running aircon for two reasons. Firstly, I suspect it causes respiratory problems because the air coming out of aircon is pretty unnatural. 
And secondly, I'm a cheapskate. My gas guzzler car is expensive enough as it is. If I use aircon, my fuel economy is going to drop by 5% at least. So, is there an alternative? Again, while browsing Amazon, I came across something that claims it can help. It's a reusable dehumidifier bag. Basically, it's a kilo of silica gel in a porous cloth sack. You may have seen these little packets of silica gel before. Uh, whenever you open the box on a new gadget, for example, there will be one of these little packets inside. And the job of these packets is to absorb any excess moisture in the air so your device doesn't get damp inside it. This big fat lump of silica gel is supposed to basically do the same thing. So I tested it. This is what my windscreen looks like normally every morning. And this is what it looked like the day after I stuck this thing on my dashboard. I will say that yes, it did make a difference. However, that difference is pretty small. I will probably keep it in my car anyway. Apparently, once it's absorbed a lot of moisture, you can stick it in uh, the microwave for, for 10 minutes and it will steam all that moisture out and be as good as new. I'm not particularly confident about the stitching on this thing. It's already started to fall apart. And it's not a perfect solution to my problem, but it seems to make a small difference. So I will live with it, but I won't recommend that you buy one for yourself. And as a result, I've basically rejected three products in a row today, but at least that's useful consumer advice. Anyway, that's the end of the show. This has been another episode of Tech Tuesdays. I hope you found it to be useful. I'll be back again with another video very soon, so be sure to like and subscribe. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Later, nerds.